fucking unit is Switching rally points. That's how you do it. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War was released in 2020. It initially included Warzone, which in 2024 is not available in this game. However, what we have here is plentiful in regarding boots on the ground, squad base slash solo gameplay. This is, for me, a worthy first person shooter that I played in 2024. Side note, I've been playing a little bit of the finals and the game is easy to pick up, more difficult to master, graphics are smooth and the gameplay has complexity. Basically there's a lot to appreciate in a game that is literally free to play. Gameplay is more team based, which is not a good or bad thing, just not the thing I was looking for. There is a lone wolf solo aspect that I've always appreciated in COD titles that, for me, has been present since the original Modern Warfare in 2007. The kill streaks, gun customization, nothing is like it on consoles. The pace in this game regarding the shooting and the skirmishes you get into are fast, fun, and overall engaging. Not saying that this is the best of them, heck no, nowhere near that, it's just that now, in 2024, the amount available here is sufficient and has a lot to give you without having to entertain any of the microtransactions present in the title. So yeah, this game is definitely worth your time in 2024. I've been playing COD Cold War the last month, I've reached Prestige 1 and I'm more than halfway to doing it again. I've been having a blast. This is a title that will stay installed for my PS5 for some time. Fluid gameplay, very few, for me I'd say one or two errors, for lack of a better term. COD Cold War runs well in 2024 and looks great, though nothing genre defining as the title is 3 years old. My name is Sly Boogie and I'd like to talk with you about my experience with the multiplayer for Call of Duty Cold War in 2024. Please note that I'm speaking of the multiplayer mode only. I have access to zombies in the campaign, but I bought this title specifically to play online and shoot it out with others, so I'll be sticking to that aspect for this video. I am focused on the gameplay the leveling aspect, and the overall package. So let's get into it. The leveling process is so overwhelming at first, in a good way, as there are so many unlocks available and just being fed to you at the beginning. Every level you're given access to new guns, as you keep using them, you level those guns up, which unlock additional attachments, and there are a lot of guns. Making finding your favorite weapon very easy and mastering them all harder and a huge investment. Again, it's all fun. Again, the unlocks, grips, barrels, scropes, muzzles, and more. One gun can keep you busy for a minute regarding how you want that gun to fire and how you want it to look. Every weapon has a set of camos available that will keep you occupied even after you unlock all the attachments and all that. Saying that to say there is so much bang for your buck regarding variety and cosmetics in the base package as the best unlocks are gold and diamond and that involves a significant investment of time unlocking camos for guns and quite a few camos are available that you have to unlock to get access to those so i don't mind heck i'm just focused on one gun one unlock most times the main focus is and has always been the gameplay straight front you are clear to engage So allow me to state the very obvious. The gameplay and guns feel very much like what you find in Modern Warfare titles overall. It's as smooth and solid as it's always been. That's a great thing. The movement is grounded and it's overall fun moving around the map and maneuvering past enemies and watching how my opponents do the same to me. There are a few differences in this game that make it sustainable and just fun overall. The immediate difference that stood out is what they've done with the killstreaks. I'm an old school cop player, so I've always been used to 
dying before I can kind of reach the top of the kill streaks and then having to restart from zero to kind of work my way up. That's for me how it's always been. Now, at least in this title, you don't lose a lot of that progress towards your kill streak when you die. So great gameplay overall will allow you to access, unlock, and unleash a lot of powerful, impactful kill streaks that are available to you. I've actually, you know, I'm so so. I've killed enough to get a VTOL and attack chopper. I'm not good enough to touch the last two kill streaks in the ladder, but it's good to know that I can work my way up and aspire to touch those. Now, obviously, I did take some adjustment to playing, moving around, getting to understand the map and the overall types of styles my opponents utilize in securing objectives or just overall getting kills. It's been some good learning lessons with some bad ones too. I got stomped a few times, whatever. There are opportunities to camp in this game, but there are also easy ways to snuff out people doing this. Noob tubes, sniping, even tactical rifles have range and flexibility to get at opponents hiding in corners and little nooks and also for opponents who just want to go buck wild and try to rush you with shotguns and knives. Me? I played solo and just used common sense whenever I wasn't running and gunning. I leaned into light machine guns, the RPD being a favorite of mine due to the stopping power and the overall range of the motherfucker. But yo, the scopes I started unlocking on this had me performing like this was a full auto sniper in certain maps and situations. There is so much variation to how you like to play. I initially stayed away from sniper rifles and knives as I wasn't anywhere near a pro or just comfortable using them. I trusted the reliable guns, the AK-47, the MP5, and the secondary to destroy recon airplanes and attack helicopters, you know, safe and standard. It was around level 20 to 30 where i really started to better understand the map my type of play style and where to better flank and just overall maneuver around to get a better position on my opponent where i could experiment with the guns and play style that i otherwise avoided i also like to shout out the menus in the matchmaking I don't have specific data on how many people are playing overall, but you can group your preferred modes together and match up with anyone searching for whatever mode that is. It pretty much makes matchmaking very easy, especially considering this is years after this title's release. I say it takes a few minutes for everyone to load into each match, but keep in mind that I'm always tinkering behind the screens, whether it's messing around, trying out some different kill streaks, looking at the camos I unlocked, the uh, parts I unlocked, and just seeing how to, I want to switch it around and tinker this, tinker that. I saying all that to say that I'm usually trying to hurry up getting out of the customization screen before I get loaded into the next match. So I think the match time and just the matchmaking is so bearable considering all of that. And again, three years later, I don't have any issues in regard to getting into a match. I did go into length about customization earlier. However, there are obvious flaws. There are no factions or standard soldiers. There are operators, and you can only have access to only a few of them unless you spend real money to unlock them. There are a few that unlock for completing objectives in multiplayer, and I literally mean a few, one to two. The majority is locked behind bundles and Call of Duty points, the currency system you can obtain by spending real money. There's nothing new with this. Activision has had this implemented since the original Black Ops. This system is going on currently in Modern Warfare 3. This system is now showing how anti-consumer it is with the fact that there is no way to earn Call of Duty points through gameplay, only through purchasing with real money. The bundles are at least three years old in Cold War and Activision has moved on to at least three other games since Cold War was released, meaning they could have patched in some multiplayer objective or some sort of access path to the content in the bundles without having to spend money on it, but no. Okay, so I do want to be clear before I continue that even though there are plenty of camos available, there are plenty of unlocks cosmetic wise. Playing the game and unlocking cosmetics, that's part of the gameplay process. Monetizing the skins and operators and just the flashy weapon camos behind bundles is monetizing a part of that gameplay process. Even though they don't have an effect on the gameplay, those are better looking guns, those are better looking operators, they have fancier kind of emblems and just, they're just shinier overall. So yeah, it is monetizing a part of that gameplay process and it, it sticks. Again, just a cosmetic, whatever. It's even faultier when you realize that you're, you can only see your paid for operator unless you're viewing 
or playing the game in third person and the game itself is primarily a first person shooter so monetizing this aspect is just weird nowadays even more so considering the developers have moved on to other titles to do the same thing nonetheless it stinks and just looking at this here again considering that you can't even play warzone here making the bundles have less value it just makes them smell even more regarding the overall package this should be a game where you're able to find at a fairly reduced price due to the age of the title and the fact that warzone isn't available at all on it there are more than enough players veterans who have been playing since the beginning and people who are even starting after me still active in match lobbies please note that my favorite modes were the standard team deathmatch domination control and the like i haven't really had hands-on time with search and destroy or vip escort and that's okay in fact, that does say a lot about the value of the multiplayer modes when there are favorite ones you can skip altogether or fan favorite ones you, you can skip and at the same time not feel like you're missing a thing. There is still so much to do. Zombies, the campaign, it is really saying something when the multiplayer can hook you alone. I like this title so far as it allows me to play what I want, how I want. Minus the sweet flashy skins locked behind an outdated payroll, seriously. Can even transfer these to Warzone now. But why is it still locked? Regardless, this is a title that will easily scratch that first person shooter itch. In particular, if you have never touched Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, then Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is a great investment and worth your time in 2024. I hope you enjoyed watching and or listening. Please show some support by dropping a like and considering subscribing as I do more gaming vids like this in the future. Other than that, be safe, and I hope you tune in for the next one. Cheers.